Hi, I'm Luke from Typical Contents. Have you ever seen that episode of Mad Men when Don Draper, bleary-eyed, hungover, staggers into his office and pulls out a drawer in his desk to reveal a stack of crisp white shirts still in their packaging? A plain t-shirt has essentially the same function for me. It's the everyday item that I can put on in the morning, almost without thinking, and feel like I'm ready to face the day. The t-shirt is the most no bullshit, who cares piece of clothing you can buy. It's the default item for millions of people, so I bought and tested 11 of the leading t-shirt brands and put them through their paces to find the best. We tested the Arquette Midweight and Heavyweight Tees, Asket Egyptian Cotton Tee, Koss Round Neck Tee, Entire World Classic Tee and Boxy Tee, Philippa K Lycra Tee, Fruit of the Loom Plain Tee, Mares B Schwannen 1950s Men's Tee, Sunspell Classic Cotton T-Shirt, and Uniqlo's Supima Cotton T-Shirt and the Heavyweight Uniqlo U T-Shirt. What should you look for in a t-shirt? We stuck pretty close to the classic white tee and left out anything performance-based. We also skipped out on anything that had an embroidered logo or contrast materials. Next, we thought about availability. We stuck to brands that specialized in basics and would consistently have the same t-shirt in stock. They should be available year to year with very little change in design. The fit of a t-shirt is vitally important. We paid special attention to the neckline, arms, and body of the t-shirt, as well as the overall length. Durability was tested by washing t-shirts multiple times to see if it kept its shape and softness, and to see what level of shrinkage could be expected. In terms of materials, almost all the tees we tried were 100% cotton. Special attention was paid to where and how garments were manufactured. We also considered the level of transparency that brands showed in their manufacturing process. We tested at a range of prices from 2 to 70 pounds. We kept it below 70 because it's hard to call anything above that staple. How did we pick what t-shirts to try? Well, we began by researching online, read posts on Reddit's male fashion advice subreddit, and articles from places like GQ. I also talked to industry friends and looked into t-shirts I had previous experience with. We'll start with our pick for the best overall plain t-shirt. The Asket Egyptian cotton t-shirt came out on top in our testing. It's a substantial but not heavyweight tee with a good neck fit and arm length that holds up well in a wash. Combined with three available lengths, transparent approach to manufacture, it makes it an easy recommendation for most people. When I survey a group of friends on what made a perfect t-shirt, the answers were so varied from neckline to fabric weight to fit in the body that I'm not sure a perfect t-shirt exists. What I found with Asket's t-shirt is a t-shirt that I thought satisfied most of this criteria across the board and one that I thought would suit the broadest number of men. The fabric is weighty without feeling too heavy to be worn as an underlayer. It's 180 GSM, which is on the lower end of heavyweight, and for me is the perfect all-rounder weight for an everyday t-shirt. Passes the nipple test. My nipples were not visible through the fabric. The neckline has a flattering and substantial rib with a slightly 1950s feel. The sleeves came about three quarters of the way down my bicep and were fairly narrow, but they had a slight flare that made them comfortable to wear. The t-shirt has three lengths available. I opted for regular, which came halfway down my fly and looked good both tucked and untucked. I'm about 5 foot 11. The body had a fairly straight fit that was maybe slightly on the narrow side. In terms of wash and wear, the Asket t-shirt has kept its shape well and the fabric retained its initial softness and didn't noticeably shrink in a 40 degree wash cycle. I was also impressed with the transparency of the brand, which extended to a subsite for the t-shirt factory in Portugal and a price breakdown with the cost to manufacture and the retail markup. I found the boxing and labeling to be of a nice Scandinavian minimal quality. 30 pounds is a lot for a t-shirt and quite honestly, it's likely more than I would generally spend on one, but I can see the work that's gone into this t-shirt to make it flattering for the majority of men. The length options, which are a rare option for most brands, means this will be especially suitable for taller or slightly smaller guys. And for the ethically minded consumer, the brand's transparency is thorough and well presented. Sunspell's classic cotton t-shirt is a soft and drapey luxury t-shirt and is my runner-up pick for the best t-shirt. Suitable for those who prefer more lightweight fabric and drape, and the UK-based heritage brand certainly makes some of the most beautiful t-shirts I've ever encountered. Super soft and drapey with a very clean neckline and detailing, genuinely feels like a luxury product, much more so than most of the t-shirts we tested. It also washed very well and kept its shape and color. It's available in a huge range of options in terms of pattern and tasteful colorways. That said, it's 70 pounds and is hard to consider Sunspell a staple piece. If you're building a capsule wardrobe, there's a lot of things that would be a better use of your money. In testing, I found that the cause round neck tee was actually a pretty good approximation of the soft, refined, drapey look of the Sunspell tee, albeit fitting a bit slimmer and with not quite as much drape. The lightness of the fabric is not going to suit all body types. If you're more of a heavyweight tee guy or if you have a bit of weight on you, it's probably not going to flatter you. The brand is a favorite of many of my friends in the fashion industry for good reason though. It's beautifully made and probably as good as a staple item can be, albeit 
it at a hefty price, especially when you consider that the brand does no multi-packs or discounts. However, Sunspell generally has a pretty decent seasonal sale, and if you're considering it, giving it a go, I'd recommend it. Basically, if you've got the money and you prefer a lighter, more refined t-shirt, this is the one to go for. The best cheap everyday t-shirt is Uniqlo Supima Cotton t-shirt. Comes in a more relaxed fit, it will last a long time, and it's in a huge variety of colors. For these reasons, Uniqlo's t-shirt is my budget pick. If you're just looking for a good everyday t-shirt and aren't inclined to spend more than a tenner, then Uniqlo's Supima Cotton t-shirt can't be beat. The fabric is soft Supima Cotton that washes and wears beautifully. My three-year-old tee is still going in good nick. And the fit is good all around, with a slightly relaxed feel bordering on boxy that makes it suitable for most body types. It comes in a huge range of seasonal colors, Colors, costs just under 10 pounds, and Uniqlo tees are generally produced in India. If you're looking for a more heavyweight style, they also do the Uniqlo U t-shirt, which is designed by Christophe Lemaire, the French designer's team over at Uniqlo. I've found in the winter months it's become my favorite staple. Now we're going through the other t-shirts we tested and briefly describe what we liked and disliked about them. We tried multiple weights of the Swedish high street brand Arquette's range. Shown here is their heavyweight tee. I really like the brand's minimalist branding and style, but I found the pricing on the steep side, especially for the heavyweight tee at 32 pounds. While the fit was fine, it just wasn't noticeable, and the fabric was almost micro mesh like and comfortable with a good drape. They did wash well, so they weren't bad t-shirts, I just thought there was better value for money and quality elsewhere. We also tried Cause's basic t-shirt up. I was a big fan and I felt it was closest to the sun spell and feeling like a really smart, luxurious t-shirt but it's quite drapey and slim fitting and it certainly wouldn't suit every body type. If you want the feel and look of a Sunspell t-shirt but you don't want to spend 70 pounds, then it's hard to go wrong with this one. It also washes and holds up really well. I've had a navy version of it that's just starting to fray now after five years of heavy use. We were excited to try the entire world classic tees and boxy tees. Really interested in the brand. Their visuals are amazing. Their approach to transparency and materials, really interesting. Both were incredibly soft and had good fits. And in fact, when I first got them, they were my favorite, but they lost that soft handle with washing almost immediately and felt somewhat flimsy. I was also a bit disappointed to see their nice branding that was screen printed on fading and peeling after the first wash. At $32 each, they are also much more expensive than Uniqlo for what actually felt like a similar quality of product. I was curious about tees with a slightly more modern and technical fabrication, and I had fonder memories of an older variation of the Villa Bouquet Lycra tee. The fabric was interesting, and I thought it was nice, and it was in the more fitted end of things, but it actually lost shape over time. The neckline didn't hold up from repeated washings, and though it kept its color okay, and I'm impressed by the brand's transparency about factors in sustainability, at 47 pounds it was one of the most expensive styles, and I really didn't see the value. So Fruit of the Loom is one of those brands that comes up again and again in these sorts of lists, and I knew they were the originators of the American t-shirt, but I was deeply disappointed with the product. It looked and felt cheap, and it is, but considering the Gildan Heavy Tee, which was at the same price point, it's one of my favorites from testing, I was disappointed. I wouldn't recommend it. I wanted to try a t-shirt that was as close as possible to an authentic vintage t-shirt. After researching a number of different options, I went with Mers B. Schwannen's 50s tee. This tee is produced on a loop wheeler machine in Germany, which dates back to the 1930s. They work very slowly to create the characterful, slubby textured cotton, which has a bit of natural stretch in it. I really liked the feel of the cotton and the fabric, and the fit was cool in that classic way. It was kind of like the sort of thing James Dean would wear in old films. But at almost 50 pounds, it didn't blow me away or feel noticeably better than the other options I tried. That said, the brand does everything in-house, they have a huge range of t-shirts in different historical styles and weights, so I'd really like to see more of them. Gildan was one of the cheapest tees we tried, but I actually really liked it. I mean, it didn't feel amazing, the fabric was a bit coarse, but the fit was quite cool. It was almost like the Mersby Schwannen style with high sleeves, 1950s style. And if you wanted something in that classic cut that was much cheaper, the Gildan Heavy was a pretty good option. It shrunk a lot in the wash and it's a bit throwaway, but if you just buy 20 tees to wear them out, why not go with this? To recap, our best overall pick is the Asket Egyptian Cotton T-shirt. It's a substantial but not heavyweight tee with good neck fit and arm length, and it holds up well in a wash. It has three available lengths and a transparent approach to manufacture. That makes it an easy recommendation for most people. It costs $45 or 30 pounds. Sunspell's Classic Cotton T-shirt is our runner-up, or our also good pick. It's a soft and drapey luxury T-shirt from a British heritage juggernaut. It's suitable for those that prefer more lightweight fabric. It costs $79 or 69 pounds. Our budget pick is Uniqlo's Supima Cotton t-shirt. It's a great cheap everyday t-shirt that comes in a more relaxed fit and will last over time. It's also available in a huge variety of colors. Have you tried any of these t-shirts? Do you have any other recommendations for t-shirts we should try? Let us know below. 
You can find links to purchase all the teas mentioned in this video in the description. Check out our full written guide, plus lots of other guides, over on typicalcontents.com.